one test case to run in all the platform and some tips on the image based testing. So Martin is uh, one of the QA here in Carousel. Myself, Sham, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> uh, Martin is a traveler. He has visited more than 50 countries. 52, isn't it? OK. Then when he visited Singapore, we just appointed him as a tester here. Yeah. So to you, Martin. OK, thanks. Um, as Sham already mentioned, I'm Martin. Uh, nice to have you all here uh, in Singapore at our nice office here at Carousel. So uh, we're going to be talking about a single framework to test uh, multiple platforms, so Android, iOS, and web. And the second part will be about visual uh, testing. If you have any questions at any point, just uh, stop me. Uh, it can be rather boring if one person is talking for one and a half hours, so interrupt me anytime, raise your questions, and I'm, I'm happy if I can help. Okay, maybe, uh, yeah, Sham already did an introduction, so I guess we can skip that. Uh, so uh, I've been working in IT for about 15 years and recently uh, focused on, on automation. Um, I'm here at Carousel since 2018, so just three months now. Uh, yeah, and I'm from uh, originally from Austria, from Salzburg. Just because I was thinking about whether should I put this picture, but again, someone said, "So nice, you come from Australia." So I'll make the distinction uh, clear. And just to give you some context, I'm from Salzburg, which is known for two things and two things only: uh, it's the birthplace of Mozart and yeah, there's some weird movie called Sound of Music, which we don't care about so much. Uh, also, coming to our, to our topic about test automation, I'm not sure who knows uh, one of these two uh, companies. Um, we're not going to talk about that uh, today, but just I, th I found that interesting myself when I started to do automation. And actually, uh, for Austria, for being such a small country, has two of the big players uh, in test automation based, have their offices based there. So Tricentis is doing a test here that's called Tosca. Uh, if anyone has a chance to look into that, it uh, can also be quite useful. Uh, but what we are going to talk about today, so this is um, broadly the, the tech stack, which I'm going to cover for the first part of this talk. So we have Appium in the center, which is the uh, main topic of, of these meetups. Uh, we're also going to use Selenium. Um, we have Selenite. The whole thing is going to be based uh, on, on Java. I'm not sure. How many of you have used uh, Appium before? Can we get some hands? So I will, it's not like a general introduction. I will give some general thoughts as well. It's more of how can we use, how can we build a test framework to test against multiple platforms and not doing uh, work more than once. So uh, it's going to be based on Java, uses some Spring, Maven, JUnit, Cucumber, but we get to the details a little bit later. And yeah, almost everything we're talking about is open source. So if you're looking for some test solution for, for your company, uh, you're gonna, you want to use in your job, all of, the, all of these are free. So what is the scenario we're talking about? Uh, today's, mm, uh, in today's world, a lot of businesses, they develop their apps not just for, for single platform, but almost always for, for multiple platforms. So like for example, if you take uh, Carousel, you have an Android app, we have an iOS app. Every idea you have, if you want to have an app, you have to support all the platforms. And then on top of that, we have uh, a version for web. Sometimes it's the other way around, like uh, services like Amazon, Facebook, they started with a web uh, application and then later on they added apps. And the idea is, the, here's some more, like Gmail, Amazon, uh, Stack Overflow is the one on, on the far right. We will use that for the demo. The idea is the system is the same on all platforms. So 
I would argue that the testing should be similar as well. So the first sentence is basically the key message I would like to bring across, that handling tests for different platforms separately is not the most efficient way, which is my personal opinion. So others might have different opinions, but I think there's a lot to uh, win if you have a common approach to testing. Uh, you can, um, because if you don't do that, you will end up to have possibly different use cases for every platform. Like a common scenario is uh, a company develops a web application and then they decide, oh, we want to have an app and they outsource that to some company overseas and give them uh, the work to develop an app for them. Uh, and maybe you have one team doing an Android app, another team does iOS, a third team does the web. And so there's a big risk that things go in different directions. And that also includes the testing. So if you do it that way, possibly you also have different frameworks and different ways to integrate them into your build process. So what I've, I've been thinking about, how can we be more efficient with that? And what of the above could actually be reused across the platforms? So mm, we're going to look into a solution that's based on Selenium and Appium. Uh, just a quick uh, start for you. Uh, Selenium is an open source framework to do automation for web. How many of you have heard of Selenium? I think it should be pretty much everyone. Um, so when I applied here at, at Carousel, one of my first tasks in interviews was build and uh, write a test automation for our apps with Appium. And I'm not joking, first thing I did, I went to Google and typed Appium because I never used it before. Um, and, but it's pretty straightforward and one of the first things that I, that I noticed is how similar, uh, that it's actually just an extension of, of Selenium for mobile testing. So let's go back to the Selenium slide. So this is basically Java code, how you write an automated test uh, with Selenium. So you have to instantiate your, your web driver, you have to tell them to what URL to go, and then everything is basically a web element that you identify on a page and then you can uh, call actions on it, like send some keys, uh, click on it, or just basically check whether it's available. And if you compare that to what Appium does, we can already see it's pretty much the same. Uh, then I had a look at the uh, class diagram. So the web driver interface, there is an implementation for Selenium and there's an extension for that that uses Appium. The same for web element. So when I saw this, for me it was quite, quite a logical thought that we should build a generic framework that targets all of these. So um, to define our test cases, what we use is uh, Cucumber to define feature files. Uh, how many have had experience with uh, Cucumber? Nice. So it's also uh, it's a framework that uh, is very easy to integrate with Selenium. I'll talk about all of that in more detail when we do the demo, just a, a quick overview. So the feature file then links to step definitions. That's again just a piece of Java code that tells the framework what actions to trigger for each step, also called the glue code. And then to represent the pages, we use a page object pattern. That means every screen in the app or every uh, page on the web is represented as a Java object and then I can encapsulate all the actions I can trigger. For example, here it's home page, and I call the search method on it and say I want to search for a specific query. And then this page object will take care of identifying the elements on the page and performing the action. So I, when I use the page object, I don't have to care about how do I identify the elements, what CSS selector, what XPath, or what ID do I need to use. Then we also use Selenite, which is 
bit of syntactical sugar on top of selenium, which makes the code easier to read. Uh, does anyone have uh, used selenite before? Anyone of the guys who are familiar with selenium can really uh, suggest uh, you have a look at that. It's very uh, helpful and makes, in my opinion, tests easier to, to read and to maintain. Uh, one last framework we also integrated is uh, SRJ. So that's a framework for, for assertions for everyone who's writing unit tests, no matter what or no matter what type of test, whether it's Selenium or it's a backend unit test, uh, is probably familiar with this assert that or assert equals or whatever. Um, and for this one feature alone, SRJ is really worth it because you can add messages to these assertions. Usually you have assertions, you run your test, when everything's green, it's cool. When you have an error, you have a log file that says, uh, assertion failed, expected true, but found false. So the poor person who needs to look into that log file and figures out what is actually wrong, that's not a very useful error message. So that's just one small thing that SOJ can do for you. You can put assert that as, and then you put a message. And just makes your log files much easier to read. And it, it's really a small feature, but it helps a lot if you're tracking down errors. Okay, so this is again how um, how one of our pages look, and we use dependency injection with Spring. So everyone who used Selenium before, you need to uh, instantiate the uh, page objects if you use page object pattern. Uh, we use Spring to do that out of the box. So let's say you have a home page object, and the home page has links to a uh, questions page. So this example, we will see later how it works, is Stack Overflow. So we have a questions page and the text page. So if you want to use a different page object in another page, usually you would have to instantiate that object. And here you can just uh, define it as a, private, um, as a private field, and the framework will take care for you that it's available. Yeah, and the same works in steps as well. So you have no constructor calls, you just declare your field and you're good to go. So coming back to our uh, initial scenario and talking about multiple platforms, what can we actually reuse? So we saw how we structure our test with the feature files, with the step definition, with page objects. And I would say that of the feature files, you can probably reuse 80 to 90%. It depends on how different your application is across platforms. But most features will be very similar. Let's say we start with the, well, the basic example everyone always gives is login. It doesn't matter if you log in on Android or you log in on iOS or on web. The feature definition is the same. Given I'm not logged in, if I log in as user ABC, then I am logged in as that user. So I think it's, it's important to have one feature file for all three. Because if you say we do the testing for iOS, Android, web separately, then three teams will come up and have to define this test case three times. Uh, for the steps, probably around the same because the step is only um, the Java representation of the feature file for the page objects themselves. This pretty much depends on, on the application. So you can probably only reuse, it's a, it's a rough guess, maybe half of it. Uh, the only thing that will be really different is the way you identify objects uh, on, on a page. So the XPath CSS identifier. But in an ideal world, this is the only thing that's different. So one of the first things we did, we wanted to make our page objects uh, platform specific. So we just define, okay, this page is for these platforms. 
we use, if anyone's familiar with Spring, we use uh, Spring profiles for that. So when you start up your application, you specify which platform you want to test against, and then only the page objects for this platform are available. So lastly, for identifying objects on, on your user interface, uh, that's also basic Selenium, Appium uh, usage. You can use IDs, you can use XPath selectors, you can use C uh, XPath expressions, you can use CSS selectors. Uh, recommendation is wherever possible, try to use IDs. Pressure the developers that they put IDs on every field so that you don't have to have these XPath expressions that are like 200 characters long. Um, makes life for test automation a lot easier if you have problems. I think I see some smiling faces. I guess we all know the pain that we can go through otherwise. Um, the way the the syntax works, and I will explain later how how it's done. Um, we move back to the selenite. Uh, sorry. Where is my slide? Yeah, uh, to the selenite slide. Nice thing here. Everyone who's anyone is familiar with jQuery knows this uh, dollar syntax, which is pretty easy to to use. And what I've done is taken this a step further because the idea here is not the ID of the actual element. It's not the CSS selector either. It's just it's going to be mapped. So this here is a property file and it says, okay, this is called the search field, map it by ID and then give the ID. <coughs> so you also encapsulate the <coughs> uh, UI identifiers away from your code and you separate it from your code. Yeah, I will share, the, I will demo the thing uh, shortly. If anyone's interested, everything's open source. It's very similar to what we use at Carousel. Um, yeah, I think enough of the talking. It's much easier to, to get an understanding when looking at the code. So these are the, the two modules uh, available at the, at the GitHub. One is the framework itself. If you just want to use it, you don't have to bother about it too much. The idea when writing the test framework was have the framework do the heavy lifting and make the test cases itself as easy to write as possible. So you can see I have two uh, demos one for, for Carousel and one for the Stack Overflow app. Um, and this would be, is it big enough for everyone to read the code? Can we see? Okay. <coughs> so this is, this is an example of the, of the page objects. So the only thing we need to do, annotate it as a, com a component, say, okay, this page object is for Android and iOS. Web is slightly different, so web just extends the other one because the login um, is slightly different. Actually, in this case, it's just going to the initial URL at first, which you don't have to do on the app. But everything else will be reused for all the different platforms. So every page object correspond, uh, correspondence to one property file that holds the UI identifiers. Works by naming convention, it's in the same package. So then I can do things like identify the login button simply by dollar uh, login button. Then the next thing, maybe we go to the, to the feature file. <coughs> and this feature is like very, very boring. When I log in, then I see the user menu. I will show you the 
The other one for Stack Overflow, it's a bit more sophisticated. Also uses a uh, scenario outline and different examples where basically tell Cucumber, okay, run this feature and then and replace the tag with these values. So it runs it once for Selenium, once for Appium. And the last thing we already saw on the slides are the steps that link to the, uh, to the, to the feature file steps. So it's also just an annotation given I am on the home page that corresponds to, sorry, to this one. Okay, and lastly, uh, there's a bit of uh, configuration mm, that just has some general settings, which platform to test against, where are my pages, where are my page objects, where are my steps defined, where, which features to run, and then some settings specific to the platform. Um, you can run this out of Eclipse or from, from command line. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so the only, the only property we have to set is the location to, to our property file. And that's, that's all there is. So now we're running this file. This platform is Android. So we should see simulator starting up. Let's put it, leave it here. We have the log file here. Now um, we use JUnit to, to run the tests. And pro it basically goes through all the feature files and tests the features. Should be done any second. Okay. So everything green, everything successful. So the nice thing now is if I want to test for web, all I have to do is say the platform is web and I run it again. It's the same test runner, same Java command, except now we expect Chrome. It uses the same features to run the same test cases against the web. So you also get uh, what Cucumber gives you is you have the result here in your IDE, but you can also have a look at the at the report that is generated. See how my one-handed typing goes. It's just a very, very basic cucumber report. The much fancier version um, with nicer styling. There's a uh, lot of tools you can use for that. But basically, the idea is just to have an HTML report you can, you can use. And it also integrates nicely with any continuous integration. You can integrate it with uh, Jenkins. 
because basically all you have to do is call one uh, Java command. We we use Maven to to call the test framework and you integrate it that way. So. Okay, let's see. So lastly, I uh, showed you Android iOS, uh, Android and web. We still have iOS to go, just to prove to you guys that this actually works. And just put Appium here. Can show you the the carousel test cases. Oh, sorry. This just takes a while to start up the, the simulator. And again, it's the same, uh, the same command, same framework, same test cases. Actually, different set of test cases. You get the idea. Installs the app. And then the web driver agent that Appium uses to communicate to the simulator. And then run the test case. And we have success. Again, let's try for Android. And this is really all that needs to be done. Change the platform. This one's a bit slow because we have some issues identifying the uh, <clears throat> the UI elements, but it works. Okay, also also successful and the same uh, for web as well. So. Basically, what what this is is an easy way to write tests across different platforms. Uh, have a easy to use framework which can be integrated uh, in a in a CI to to execute these tests. I mean, the test cases themselves are quite simple, but you get the idea. And this is you can extend this however you like. Uh, and I think for us. It already had uh, had a lot of benefits to do it this way, and not have a separate way of testing for every <clears throat> for every platform. <clears throat> Another way uh, to look at it: Why is it important to have test cases or features for all platforms together? Sometimes, if you develop an app in different teams, and you have one team is responsible for iOS, one for Android, like what I talked about before. What can also happen is that it's slightly, the app turns out to be slightly different. Like very subtle changes, like a form looks a bit different in, on one platform compared to the other. And no one will ever really find these issues. We can argue whether it's a bug or it's okay to have these differences, but a user who uses your product on different platforms 
expects it to behave the same all the time. So in that sense, <clears throat> the testing or the QA part could actually be <clears throat> like the umbrella holding the different platforms together. And this is one of the additional benefits you get if you have <clears throat> a common set of, of feature files and a common way of testing. Any any questions so far? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> currently, with uh, with this version of framework, not it's something we're looking at right now. But I know that <clears throat> uh, Selenium, both Selenium and Appium, can be run in parallel. We just haven't integrated it yet because the way we separate the platforms using the Spring profiles makes it a bit tricky to do but it is very well possible. So what I would like to have in the long run is something like that. But even if you if you can't if you're not able to do it with with a single run, you can still uh have Jenkins jobs that run in parallel and do the parallelization uh some some other way. Even if you you just need one Appium server for iOS and Android Appium is able to handle tested parallel, so you don't really lose so much if you can't run the test in parallel in one Java virtual machine. Just if I can actually try if anything breaks. Um, let's demo this. We're a bit too slow for iOS. We'll restart it again. But basically, to to answer the question, it's very easy also to find ways to run run in parallel. Just give me a second. So now we have Android and iOS. Uh, any any more questions? Yeah. Sorry, on on real devices. <clears throat> uh, I've run it on real devices for for Android. Um, I haven't tried for for iOS, uh, but we have a very similar uh, setup that we use at Carousel, and we use real iOS, real iPhones, and real Android devices. 
So I would suspect that it works. Now, Appium supports real devices for, for both platforms. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, what we use is in the feature files, we use tags. So Cucumber allows you to tag a feature. And these tags, in, in this case, just match, map to the platform. So there is a feature called new question, which I decided only runs for Android. Or the Stack Overflow test cases we've seen before. Uh, this one is for all three platforms. And there is another one that is only available for web. Because the, the one test case is using the search function, the other one tests the filtering. And the filtering, I'm not sure if they have implemented it for the apps at all. So I just test this for web. So this is the way you can uh, quite easily, if a certain feature doesn't exist on one platform, you just don't put the tag on that feature file. The more challenging bit is if the feature exists but is slightly different, then you have to uh, use either the approach we've seen before with the page objects. Here I have a page object for, for web. And then, because Android behaves slightly different, I just use inheritance to have a page object for uh, for the other platforms. In that case, this is wrong. Um, so that these are the two ways you can you can use. If you have a feature that exists on on multiple platforms, but is like so different that it doesn't make sense to have a common feature file, then what you need to do is have two. But in my opinion, this is rather the exception than the rule. So you have the advantage that someone from product side can come up with the functionality in an ideal world, not the test automation engineers will do that, but product gives you a feature description it says this is supposed to behave the same across all the platforms, and then we can implement it. And if it doesn't behave the same, then it's good if it comes up. And like with many things in testing, if something is hard to test, you should consider if maybe there's something wrong with the feature or with the way the features are designed. Because if it behaves different on iOS and Android, instead of taking care of that, maybe raise the question, is it on purpose? Does it re should it really be different? Does that answer the question? Okay, thanks. Any more? Any? Okay. No. Should have done that for the other questions too. Oh, so the question is how to tell the framework what are the identifiers? Oh, yeah. So we have these uh, property files I talked about before, and they are also separated into packages. So there's a package for Android, and there's a package for iOS, and there's a package for web. And so
So you're talking about something like, you would say, sorry, give me a So, pseudocode, obviously. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thought because that's exactly what uh, Carousel had uh, when I first looked at it. And we discussed about it and agreed that in the long run, if you have lots of page objects, a lot of code, this is not maintainable. Because if you have a clear separation then the page object for iOS should not care about Android. It should not even know that there is something like Android. Uh, you can do it th this way. There's no problem. It works works as well. Mm, but my opinion, it is easier to have the distinction between the platforms in separate files because it makes it much more uh, readable. So, for example, if something changes in uh, on on iOS, like some accessibility IDs for some reason are different, then all I have to do is find the property file for iOS. And chances are, if something changes, it doesn't change just one, but maybe more of them. So I have them all in one file and can change them all at once. Also. It's not just, maybe it's not just uh, one method that uses this object or this object isn't used once in a single method even. Maybe I have to interact with, uh, with an element more than once. So let's say this expression will occur many, many times throughout the class. If, it, if the identifier changes, I need to refactor it everywhere. And I have to refactor it across all these if-else cascades. Um, it's a matter of uh, what you prefer. The if definitely works. This is a different approach. Yeah. yeah. Take a screenshot or is it possible to take a screenshot or take a, a video whenever the test is run? And if it's possible, uh, how do you categorize them into a web, iOS, and Android? Is it categorizable or categorizable? So screenshots per se are uh, possible. There is something, if you look at the, uh, the web driver, I'm not sure I can do this with one hand only. <laughs> Let's take, for example, Chrome driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not. Yeah. yeah maybe. Maybe. Maybe uh, it's possible. Maybe. Uh, maybe I'll just yeah. explain. But so. <laughs> Basically, the, the web drivers will implement an interface that I think is called take screenshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the main web drivers do that, so you, yeah, you can take screenshots. Um, it's not per se built into this framework because so far this is a proof of concept for right. mostly for this meetup, but it's very easy to add. I did this in, in other projects. Uh, it's also quite easy to add video. There's a framework <coughs> that can record videos uh, with Selenium. And the, way to the second part of the question, how to store it, I would suggest that you have uh, a, a, for example, you can have a small web application that stores your test results. If you have a lot of tests, HTML reports only will get you so far. So what I've done for my, for my previous company, we built a very simple web application with a database behind that saves the test results for everyone mm. and attaches the uh, screenshots and videos. And 
you can do it simpler the categorization is, is to separate between web Android and iOS you just put it in, in different folders you have the context when you run the tests the framework knows I'm running for iOS or I'm running for Android so you can categorize the, the videos in, in that way but if you have a lot of tests there's Pro it's probably a good investment to have some sort of tool, whether it's a third-party tool that's available or something you built yourself to store the test results, including videos. Did that cover the question or you want to have a follow-up? Yes, that's enough. Okay. We're talking about uh, this configuration file? I thought I understood your question, but then you confused me if we're talking about this configuration. Or I, I changed it here. Yeah, so this is obviously also just for, for demo purpose. Um, what you would have in the real world is three different property files. Yeah, you, so you have one configuration for web one configuration so for web I could remove this don't need I just put it in one file because it's it's simpler to to showcase for Android you would just have general settings on the Android and the mobile settings and for iOS the same idea so then you have three different files and in the CI you call three different three different uh, commands so in this example, three different Maven commands where you pass, I'm not sure you can see this, uh, where you pass one time, let's say properties is carousel Android, then it's carousel iOS or web. Is that what you mean? Um, okay. So, uh, okay, so in case like, uh, as you mentioned earlier, like uh, we won't be having the best case of ID every time. Uh, yeah, that's a real mess, like we'll be having the XPath and the, sometimes ID won't be there. So uh, we usually uh, approach like, uh, there should be a fallback locator, like if you're not able to find the ID, then we'll be falling back to, you know, XPath or some, something else. So uh, uh, I just want to know like, uh, is there a better way of organizing the locators instead of properties or something? And, and also like, uh, uh, say for example, your app is in multiple languages, right? So uh, even for that case, I know it, it is achievable by properties, but going forward it will grow the, uh, uh, you know, uh, so is there any approach you have thought about on that? Yeah, I thought about this as well. <clears throat> so internationalization is maybe something uh, for sure something that will uh, we need to take care of again ideally the properties shouldn't differ between different languages if it's IDs it only differs if you really have to match a certain text uh, the easy approach would be to have properties also for different uh, locales for different languages 
fallback that could also be done with properties if you like separate it in in some way and put a one or more fallbacks mm, the more sophisticated way would be to again have a small web GUI where you can maintain your uh, your identifiers and save them to a database and query them from there but um, it feels a bit like an overkill for most use cases another way could be to have a more structured uh, format like uh, JSON or YAML file yeah because so, uh, the same application we are uh, uh, automating in multiple platforms right so yes uh, uh, instead of having different properties like uh, as you said if you have a JSON file like for the same element the locator might be different in the different platforms so probably if we have a JSON file you know like uh, we can organize it better right <coughs> Yeah, that's <clears throat> again a question, a bit of a question of taste, what you consider well organized. Mm, I definitely see the benefit of having having a YAML file or a JSON file in the long run. It's just not something we went ahead implementing for this first for this first version. But I, I absolutely get your point and looking forward there is much more flexibility if you do it in, in such a way. Okay, thank but, you. Yeah. Do we have some more questions? Otherwise, I think we still have some more food. Maybe make a five to ten minute break. We have a second part coming up about oh yeah we, we did quite a few of them <clears throat> about just a, we'll probably be a bit shorter than, than the first first part about visual testing and layout testing what you can do with Hume uh, introduce a couple of frameworks to, to use for that uh, maybe also take the opportunity because I'm the only speaker today Last time, uh, Sham and Jerry, then we had two. So what we're planning to do with these uh, meetups is to open it up to the community. So this shouldn't be like Carousel presenting to everyone else. We want everyone who's in the QA and testing community in Singapore to, if they want to, to contribute. So we have a we have a Slack channel. I will share the link later where we in, uh, where we announce our meetups. So if anyone is interested in, in talking, or has an interesting topic, or maybe some, some nice framework or solution they, they've done, feel free to let us know. I think it's very important that we as a community share what we are doing so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Because especially for, for test automation, for some weird reason, it seems like it's a very common thing we all have, that we all have, Obviously, we all have the same challenges, and there is a tendency that everyone tries to solve them again from scratch. So I've been talking. We had a consultant at my previous company. They were um, management wanted us to talk to them to get some feedback about what we've done, and I've talked to them, and they said, "Yeah, you, basically, it's you're know, quite um, mature level of automation, but we." told them the story, the steps, how we progressed, and said, that's the same I've been hearing from every single company that I've consulted. So everyone faces the same challenges, has the same stuff to, to deal with. So I think especially for test automation, it's very important that we share what we know, what we've done, how it worked for us. So this is my invitation for, to you to yeah, share, share your ideas and be, be part community that Sham has has started here in Singapore. So let's have a short break. I hope to see everyone again for the for the second part. Thank you.